what's up you guys it's your girl baby back again and i wanted to leave y'all with a little bit of hope and inspiration for your week bless you nigga If all he eaten every single day is pork chops and sipping on lean and he ain't got no life insurance policy and you're not the beneficiary of one if he has it, then you hustling backwards. I want to... If we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. That doggy, that doggy in the window. That's right. I've got to start whipping everybody. Take your ass to work. Go on to work. I don't want to hear it. Go to work. Listen. I'm talking about karma. I'm talking about how you can overcome karma. We're talking about moving away from who shot John, because you know who shot John. The baby did. Had the black mom and her natural habitat. I am brushing out my dog, Potty Boy, because I adopted him back in August and it seemed like a good idea at the time, but that nigga's been leaving tumbleweed all over my apartment. Oh, he stink. You may be asking yourself, why on earth is baby, young baby, combing this nigga out with a rat tail comb? And it's quite simple. It's all I had. Tumbleweed everywhere. <laughs> now to express the anger then. Okay, you go get it and just pull it back for you, girl. I'm Halloween here. It, it's like when you say something ridiculous and the cameraman is like, that's enough. <laughs> I guess that is a good one. It's a good TikTok. The way he's like closing his eyes, he's so relaxed. So my days have been going really, really slow right now because, I mean, I'm waiting for my big break to commence fucking breaking and it's gone real slow and that's okay too but in order to fill out my days I've been being the best mom possible to the only child that I now have available to me because my daughter's 17 now she's living her own life or whatever and she just went on her very first date last night <laughs> So I don't really have like a baby to coddle anymore, except for DeAndre Baby Cortez. So I've been trying to like really pour back into my nigga baby. <laughs> I'm 
fact that he's sitting still too is funny. <laughs> Come on, you have to go to the bathroom, boy. We're gonna be here for a while. It looks like um, Chewbacca. Yeah. Or like the Bigfoot. No, he's just going upstairs by himself. <laughs> Not the let's go. Ooh, I'm thinking you're straight as the dog here. desire for a person that really was on that young bullshit on that stupid shit on that dodo shit on that move out the way before i burn you bitch i will kill you nick i won't really kill nobody but honestly like it fired me up so deeply that somebody number one didn't see my worth and see my value but even if you don't see my worth and my value it's cool if that's the case but don't try to run a foul on me because i don't know because you want me to always remember you, I will always remember you if you do the right thing. Now, this other type of way, I'm just going to move on and like live my best life and figure out how to live my best life in spite of all the BS. Damn it. And so listen, am, am I going to let a nigga run me hard and kill me in this lifetime? No, baby. No. No, baby. And you know what's really, really funny is when I met this person, I said, oh, you remind me of my little brother, because he did. And I think he thought that meant that I didn't want to fuck with him. <laughs> I mean, but I wanted the dick. I just said it in, this, in the sense that just like I would tell my sister-in-law, run that nigga for, for what he's really worth and make control. him respect you. Big mama, she got a pussy so proper. I made him eat me like a whopper, then I hit him with this chopper. Mm-mm-mm, he was 32. Mm-mm-mm, I took his money too. Mm-mm-mm, I gave his ass the boot. Mm-mm-mm, and baby, you should too. Let me talk to y'all. This was another Snarky Black Girl production, baby. Like, share, and subscribe, boo. This pussy go crazy. It'll run your nigga brazy. Dry that nigga crazy. But fuck love, pay me. And pay me cause I'm baby. Pay me cause I'm baby. Pay me cause I'm baby. I'm baby nigga. I'm baby young, baby young, baby nigga. You can check my figures. They bigger than you, my nigga. Cause I'm baby young, baby young, baby nigga. My nigga mo Jewish than Draker, like at his bar mitzvah, he mo German than Jermaine, pussy kicking like Liu Kang. I'm more addictive than cocaine, and you know my name. I'm baby nigga, I'm baby young, baby young, baby nigga. You can check my figure. I'm thicker than your bitch, my nigga, cause I'm baby young, baby young, baby nigga. And I'm a bad bitch, and bad bitches get what they want, ho. So if you play with me, I will lose it in my trunk that is an Uzi. In my glove box is a baby Glock and I ain't afraid to use it. Like I said, I'm a bad bitch and bad bitches get what they want. Ho. He moke Jewish than Draker. Like at his bar mitzvah. He moke German than Jermaine. Pussy kicking like Lou Kane. I'm more addictive than cocaine. And you know my name. When... Will I see you again? When will I see you again? So I
can bust your fucking head. When will I see you again? So I can bust your fucking head. Cause if you play with me, I will lose it. In my trunk, there is an Uzi. In my glove box is a baby Glock and I ain't afraid to use it. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, baby, back again. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, baby, back again. And I wanted to do a quick reading for my girlies out there. Now, this is going to be a quick, quick one. Y'all know I don't like to hold y'all with the readings. But it has been on my heart a bit to go over this. So, I'm hearing that your angels and or spirit is speaking to some of you guys. And um, I keep getting flashes of like the Barbie movie. And y'all know the Barbie movie, a uh, main point of the Barbie movie um, was Barbie had like this overwhelming, these overwhelming thoughts of like um, her own death. <laughs> okay. And then it was also about, you know, the patriarchy and all that. But let's move past that. It was mostly about the idea that she was depressed and had these overwhelming ideas of her own death or whatever. And so it was, it's almost like spirit is giving it to me. Like some of you guys could be like worrying your whole life away. You know, let's just say you're worried about the day that you're going to pass away, but the day that you're going to pass away is 30 years from now, or which is, a um, really, uh, this is going to be something that would resonate for my, my, my girlies that do spiritual work more. So, uh, some of you guys are worried about the idea of someone else passing away uh, or you guys are also picking up on the energies of other people maybe other people's depression maybe some of y'all do spiritual work and uh, the energy that you're getting isn't even your own energy oh shoot it's so funny because i just saw this card and i put it back into the deck but it came out again anyway so what you don't see what you don't see or, or what you don't really recognize is that the reason you feel this way or the reason that you're sensing these things is a byproduct of impatience and impatience is also like a byproduct of um anger or temper in a way um so you've got this idea of impatience coming in and then you got the ace of cups now all these cards are in the reverse which most likely just means that my deck i was holding it in the reverse but i pulled them however they came out so there's that part um and it's so funny because actually only only two of these cards I pulled in the reverse. The other two I turned upright. So again, I think that some of you guys are picking up other people's energy and you don't even know it. Some of you guys are also picking up like your lover's energy and don't even know it. Mm. You got the Ten of Wands. So I do feel like there's an, um, there is help on the way. Some of you guys could be getting into contact with like your tribe, your soul family or whatever. So I do see help on the way. This card fell out, and I I think it's the devil card, but it fell out uh, face up, and then it flipped back over. Oh, it's the Ten of Swords. You got Ten Ten. You got the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Wands coming out back to back, but the Ten of Swords flipped over, so that's what, you're, what you don't see. And it's almost like you guys are being given an opportunity to, like, whatever this energy is, maybe some of you guys are in this overwhelming um season of worry in your own life and you don't know why but the overwhelming season of worry in your own life is a spiritual lesson or a spiritual blessing i should say to help you guys out in, in whatever way that that makes sense like some of y'all might be feeling guilty because you think oh i could have done more i could have done this or i could have done that in pertaining to maybe the life and legacy of a different person that passed away or because i feel like this is about people transitioning out of your life and you guys having a hard time with it and I get the sense that spirit is saying like, well, all this worry that you have piled on and piled on and piled on, it's not doing anything or doing, you know, it's not, it's not benefiting you or the situation in any type of way. It's time for you guys to start over. Like, you know, you go about life in a much more haphazardly kind of like lighthearted type of way. Especially because I tell you guys all the time, like your psychic is only as good as their wounds. And I'm talking to you guys as someone who used to call herself a psychic. I do read the tarot, but some of you guys actively read the tarot for clientele and your clientele is giving you all of this unnecessary worry. So now you're, you're taking it home with you 
instead of like really looking at their situation as theirs. Like what's theirs is theirs and what's yours is yours. And it's time for you guys to put away all that extra like baggage that you guys have been carrying around in terms of, well, who's next? What's going to happen next? When is this, you know, some of y'all are like anticipating the future. And so you're, you're in a way making yourself psychic because you're so worried. And so psychic energy also, especially if you're dealing in people that could be like low vibrational, energetic vampires, or they're constantly giving you their troubles and their traumas it's it's really like a uh, like a really like a byproduct product of like this kind of idea of worry and so it's time to like let go of that listen when i bought deandre back here that's deandre cortez that's my chihuahua he's really my first husband in a way but uh he's back there and when i first got him he was all sick with that canine covid and then he ended up having heart, heart like uh look at him he like i know you're talking about me he ended up having like that uh, canine congestive heart failure or heart failure or whatever so he's on heart medication now and so it's just a matter of time before this nigga kick the bucket but if i were to preoccupy myself with when this nigga's gonna go he go it's gonna seem like it even if it happened 10 years from now it's gonna seem like it was just yesterday because i'm always worried about it let me go take this boy out i think y'all are picking up what i'm putting down when i get back i'll go into pile number two with a different deck all right let's move on to deck number two and so let's just see here. Let's see what's coming out for deck number two. Deck number two, I don't know why I feel like some of y'all have like an issue with your, um, probably like with your chakra system up to the solar plexus. Hmm. Mm. Some of you guys are trying too hard to make things happen and not really accepting the fact that, you know, some, some of this is just really, um, some of this or a lot of this is, especially when it comes down to life, is up to chance, not so much up to the fact that you are making it all happen. Up to chance meaning that once you come into alignment with what is really right for you, then you're going to see your opportunities pull, you know, dropping in or whatever, but not a moment sooner. I think that some of you guys are trying to make things happen and you're not quite on the right track just yet. I feel like almost though, like almost, almost, almost. Some of you guys out there, I ain't gonna lie to you now. I ain't gonna lie to you. I know some of y'all do psychic work. Some of you guys are in, in this field and I think it's no longer for you. It's no longer suited to you. Um, and I think once you recognize that, you would either bow out gracefully or just like um, move on. It's not suited for you. Let's just see. Now, cause when it's when it's when I'm saying it's not suited for you, let's just see. Ooh, this could be also somebody in your life. Uh, could be somebody that maybe raised you, so a parent potentially, or a husband, boyfriend, somebody that thinks that they is daddy. Um, these are people that are coming into your life trying to get you to drop your baton. I feel like there's a female in particular that could be trying to get you to drop your baton. And it's up to you to heal past that idea of somebody telling you what you can and cannot do. Because just because they can't do it don't mean that you can't do it. Although there is an energy here of not necessarily trying so hard to make it happen. Just like going with the flow. It's funny because now that I'm in this pile, I feel like sweat on my forehead, sweat on my brow, sweat on my brow. So some of y'all are working way too hard to make it happen. This is literally a card about uh, psychic and or psychic trustworthy information. And so there's this illusion, like, is it really? Oh, no, I'm not even going to say, oh, is it really this or is it really that? I think that some of you guys are too tapped into the collective in what it is that they want, what they're saying, what they're doing. Um, and that's kind of like what's hindering you. Like, let's just say you have a client that's always commenting on your on your work, whether it's good comments or whatever. Uh, and so some of y'all might have a good rapport with this person, but the messages that are coming through your collective are all coming as an, um, like they're all this person's thoughts or emotions. And so if you're saying to yourself like, oh, maybe I'm not good at this no more or whatever, it could be because a portion of your collective may want you to stop or they want you all to themselves. So there's that part. I think that some of y'all are going to recognize where you're in alignment and where you're not though. Uh, because whatever this is that you've been doing, if it's spiritual work, it's coming to you, but you've got to like kind of own it and know that it's yours. 
okay? And so whatever way that that means, though, because some of us are like, oh, well, um, some of us are waiting for the other shoe to drop. And Spirit is saying, once you become comfortable in your energy, the shoe is not going to drop. Like, the shoe is going to be unlaced and tidily tucked into a corner. It's not just going to fall out of the sky. It's not just going to be something that, that comes towards you in a way that you can't necessarily not control, but you can't control your emotions around it. And so, yes, for some of you guys, maybe you're afraid of fame. Maybe you're afraid to be out there in that type of way. Maybe you're afraid to commit to a business or to something like that because it, it could be the idea of like survivor's remorse. So there's that. It could also be the idea of, um, it could also, mm, for some of y'all though, I ain't gonna lie, some of y'all do need to step away from the idea of psychic work because it's no longer serving you I think that you've gotten what you needed out of it and now it is time to like put put that down and walk away and so with that being said I'm in pile number two I'm in pile number two because there really is nothing more to say about that I think that um the idea of psychic work is in a certain way because I keep getting the idea of illusion there is an illusion here um there is an illusion here and I think that you guys have to make a judgment call because to say that, oh, I'm a psychic really is an idea when you get into like Buddhism uh, or, you know, maybe some of y'all are not Buddha, Buddhist, which is okay. But when you research Buddhist principles, meditation and things like of that nature, uh, because in Buddhism, you're encouraged to check the energy daily or whenever you meditate in the tarot cards, you're encouraged to do that. And so I think that, um, and also in Buddhism, you're not encouraged to tell people that you're psychic though. Like that's, that's almost like, um, that defeats the purpose of meditation that defeats the purpose of like connecting deeper to spirit because you're really not a psychic. You're a conduit of whatever spirit is trying to say. And so as a conduit, you're telling people messages and things of that nature, but you ain't no psychic. Psychics don't actually exist. You know, your psychic, if you are actually like getting messages from a psychic, uh, your psychic don't really know what they're talking about. And I'm not saying that to be rude. I'm saying that because I once at one point called myself a psychic and I worked with a group of other psychics and it was almost like, um, it was almost very hustling backwards, if you will, because of the fact that it's so it's so hit or miss. Like your, your psychic is reading the cards. They're, they're taking information from the cues that you give them. If you tell them too much information, they're going to just uh, build on that. But also if your psychic has a financial need and you're feeling that financial need, they may keep giving you information that's going to keep you coming back. And I'm not saying that to be, uh, to knock your psychic because whatever, I mean, if they need the money, they need the money and they may not be suited for traditional work in their own opinions. And so this is all they know. They don't know, no, no, no. They don't know anything else. And so, you know, you putting your trust in a situation like that could potentially uh, bring you down. <laughs> it could bring, it could bring you down. You'll end up waiting for relationships that are never going to come back around. You could end up fearing situations that don't need to be feared. And you could end up in a cycle of trusting somebody else to tell you what's what about your life instead of just really tapping into what it is that spirit is really trying to tell you. Now, your very first psychic reading, if you don't say nothing to the psychic and they just give you the information, they're meditating on your energy. And that's a totally different reading than somebody you going back and saying oh well I did what you told me to do when it came down to Johnny and let's see you know it's, it's totally different from that so I want you guys to be really really aware of who it is that you're getting your information from and again if you have a psychic that you just like to rock with and talk to and pay them for 30 minutes of their time because you like to do that then by all means I don't let me stop you baby I'm telling you this in terms of if you're really trying to change your life, you really do have to tap out of what it is that somebody else has to say about your life and just really meditate on your own energy. That's how you're going to open yourself up to the bigger, wider, grand scheme of things in, in, you know, truly. So there's that part. All right. Option number three. Let me just take a look here. So you got the seven of wands on the bottom and the two of pentacles here. So there's that part. I haven't shuffled these cards in forever. But um, Seven of Wands means that you need to guard your ground, uh, you know, maintain your boundaries in, what, in whatever type of situation. And you may be having to maintain these boundaries when it comes down to two different people in your life. 
I ain't shuffled these cards in so long that I'm going to end up just taking these. So let's just see. The Two of Pentacles means that there's either a two-year period of time or there's the idea that there are two people in your life that you need to balance or two different emotions. Because the two different people that you need to balance and, and bring back into one could be you. And so look at that. You got the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands is here because you guys are uh, the Wounded Warrior. He's standing his ground. He's maintaining his boundaries at all cost. But look at the cost. Like he's very, very beaten up. I get the sense that maybe some of you guys are like looking at this like, oh, somebody in my life is going to leave your life, pass away or just whatever. And Spirit is saying like that might not be actually accurate. You know, everybody, of course, is going to separate from the body and go be present with the Lord. So don't think that that's not going to happen. I just think that some of you guys are in this mode of thinking watch pile number two some of you guys might be in this mode of manifestation and thinking that your thoughts and your ideas control your outcome if i worry too much this is what's going to happen it's not actually going to happen you can't manifest somebody to die from thinking in a negative way i know your psychic probably told you you could i'm here to tell you that's not true like stop getting psychic readings this ain't no psychic reading baby i'm telling y'all the biz stop getting psychic readings okay stop stop letting somebody else project their worries onto you because honestly if you are if you are tapped into the wrong source or your psychic is tapped into the wrong source then you're going to get the wrong information and it's going to lead you astray it's going to have you worried it's going to have you up all night sick to death that type of thing and so yeah okay the the card here says that there is somebody in your life that could pass away or somebody's going to cheat and end up walking away from you or something's going to end badly here but at the end of the day, like if it's meant to do that, it's going to do it anyway. If someone's going to pass away and separate from the body, it's going, they're going to do that anyway. This is an idea of what's going on in your own psyche. The Ten of Swords is about what it is that's going on in your own mind. Some of y'all could be having dreams or nightmares and your dreams or nightmares are leading you down this path of worry. And, you know, with dreams, with nightmares, with visions, with things of that nature, it really is just it really is just you unconsciously trying to sort through your emotions that you have while you're awake. But you might be too scared to like sort through them. You may be feeling like sad or down in the dumps because you don't want to uh, encounter what it is that's kind of got you uh, got you sad. You don't want to think about your parent passing away. You don't want to think about your child growing up and moving out of the house. You don't want to think about the fact that you'll, you might get uh, laid off this week because of whatever, whatever. Some of y'all don't want to think about that, but I get the sense that it's definitely, um, it definitely is permeating your peace in some kind of way. You fall asleep at night, you're having the best dreams of your life, and then all of a sudden you got nightmares coming in or just uh, discontentment. And it's only coming in because you've got like this, uh, you've got this feeling of, you've got this, you've got this worry, this pervasive worry that's coming into your own mind. And it really is like, this is all in your head. It's all in your head. You think about it over and over again. And so it's time to stop thinking about that. It's time to like, let it go. And so the lover's card is here because it's a choice. This is your lesson. This is your choice. Some of y'all could really choose to walk away from what doesn't serve you in terms of like negative thoughts and move into a, um, and move into a more positive, uh, mental status, but you're unable to do that. Or you may feel unable to do that because you are maintaining such either high boundaries with the people around you, or you're just not thinking clearly because you're really, really very um disturbed by something that could have happened at one point maybe maybe something bad did happen maybe some of y'all uh lost a, a family member due to violence and now you think it's going to happen over and over again and i'm here to tell you that that is um according to these cards that is and not just according to the cards though real quick let's be real like that is according to like any psychology or psychiatry uh research that's been done like your thoughts can't predict or or create a chain of events in your life. Like your thoughts do manifest into your reality, but they're not like going to cause a situation to to happen. That's like, you know, I when I first started out doing this, a lot of people asked me about spell work. A lot of people asked me about all these like really um crazy ideas and these crazy things and yeah is spell work real yes yeah, spell work is real but negative spells and things that you're trying to do uh, to the to the 
to the uh, detriment of someone else is just a product of you thinking really negative thoughts over and over again. And so if it happens to happen, yay, your spell came true. But for a lot of you guys out there, that it really isn't. Like if, it's, if it was meant to happen, it's going to happen. If somebody puts a, um, if someone puts a, a juju death spell on, on your, on whoever in your life, and they happen to pass away, they more than likely, according to the universal law of karma, they were probably set to go out on that time frame or at that time anyway. Nobody can cause that to happen. Your negative thoughts can't cause that to happen either. It's just going to put you in a space of anxiety, worry, and all that kind of stuff. And that really is, um, that's really not a, a, like a, an idea of spell work. That's not black magic or whatever. It's really a, to the, again, like to the detriment of who you are as a person. Um, and so that's why, so here's the thing real quick. I'm going I'm to end this real quick but in a minute. But uh, like a lot of people out there, they um, do like negative spells and people that really, really do like voodoo and things like that, they know already not to put bad juju on other people because it really doesn't exist. If you start putting bad juju on other people, it ain't going to do nothing to bounce back to you. OK, and the reason it bounces back to you and your family and to your life is because it's simply a series of negative uh, emotions and negative thoughts and intentions that you're putting out to somebody else. And if your thoughts create your reality, then those negative thoughts you have about somebody else is going to happen to you. That's why when somebody takes your man or somebody is out there and, you know, you might lose your husband or your wife to I don't know, the sorceress, because people really think this now. I know some of y'all are rolling your eyes and about to click off this video, but stay tuned, bitch, because I'm telling you something for real. Because people do think this. They think that, oh, well, she did spell work and she's took my man. She's not going to keep him. If that's, if that's the case and that's true and she really put her mind to taking your man from you, then the likelihood that the same thing is going to happen to her is great because she's the one with those negative thoughts and intentions wanting you to, you know, whatever, suffer a, a heartache or a heartbreak because of whatever reason. But at the end of the day, if that man like left your situation or if y'all are no longer together, it's most likely because of the universal law of karma and y'all were meant to break up at that point anyway, because the karma, you know, the karma's done, the lesson's done. And if you dwell on it and think about it, think about it, think about it, then all you're going to do is drag your own self down. And so again, our thoughts dictate our own reality. And if you're thinking about it in terms of like, oh, I want to put a juju spell on somebody, it ain't going to bounce back on you. So you are best suited to keep your thoughts positive, uplifting, highly vibrational, and wish them people well. Because when you begin to wish other people well, that means it's going to bounce back to you. And being able to like look at somebody and, and like, hope the best for them is growth, number one. Uh, but also it's a, it's a byproduct of self-love. You treat other people the way you want to be treated. Okay, so, okay, she got your man. Uh, be happy. Buy them a wedding present. Get them some baby shower gifts. Or mind your business and drink your water and find you a new nigga. Because that is the karma. That's what you're supposed to do. And so uh, if I leave you with one thing at the end of this reading, I will say this, ladies are out there, men out there, fellas out there. This is my little piece of wisdom that I want to give y'all for free. OK, I want y'all to know that you are the master of your own fate. Yes. But if you guys are working, 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 toiling for something to happen and it's not happening, it means that spirit wants you to maintain and place your focus on something totally different, something else. So what can you apply your time and attention to that's going to help to relieve or alleviate whatever this is in this present moment? Because that's where you're going to find the most freedom in your expression, in your love, life, and uh, also just like in your career and stuff. Unlock those flows. Unlock your ability to manifest income by letting go of all those other things that you've been thinking because it's just a distraction from what really is most important. You know, Oprah Winfrey says that she don't think about nothing no more. A thought comes in. And so here's the thing. So I, I, I meditate myself also and I meditate because Oprah said meditation was very uh, therapeutic for her. But also obviously like psych obviously also like psychology says that it's all that. Um, but 
when you take out all those noisy thoughts from your mind and you let your mind just connect to a higher source, that's the quiet, that's that idea of I don't think about nothing. Once you let yourself do that, 